Hey, welcome to the Weekly Hodl with Shibs and Wink, where we bring you three weekly adoption topics in Bitcoin and news in the credit card world. Last week's video about Bitcoin adoption in the kingdom of Tonga caught the attention of Lord Fuzitua himself, and this week he agreed to an interview with us. He's the man with a four-step plan to make Tonga the second country in the world to adopt Bitcoin as their currency standard, and we couldn't be more thrilled to talk to him. Shit, I didn't know I was supposed to say something. So yeah, it's eight months, 24 hours a day, reading and learning about everything uh, that's ever been written about Bitcoin and consistently so until this day. And what I learned was, uh, of course, as we know, it's the most pristine asset man has ever devised. Uh, it's the most sound monetary system a man has ever devised. Uh, it's the hardest money man has ever devised. So in a developed nation, in a G7 nation, uh, it is the best store of value, a store of your time and energy uh, in a format that will appreciate uh, year on year to an extent that it can be the foundation for financial freedom and indeed generational wealth for anyone who uh, takes possession of it. But for the emerging markets, for the developing world that I'm from, it could be life-changing immediately. It could change the entire way value is remitted to countries that are GDP remittance dependent. Uh, and it could change the, the way that countries transact who are victims of hyperinflation. Uh, in the first world, a great uh, investment store of value. So uh, that segues into what's the plan for Tonga? Yeah. Uh, so as I said, it's uh, a savior for GDP remittance dependent countries. So a uh, place like um, Samoa is at about 20%. Uh, Philippines is at about 14%. Uh, was El Mer Salvador was around 20% or so, yeah, or 30%. El Salvador was yeah. around 20%. Uh, that's percentage wise. Uh, by sheer volume, uh, China uh, and India are at 60 to 70 plus billion. Uh, Philippines, wow. th about 40 billion. Uh, and then there's Tonga. So Tonga is 40%. Uh, nearly half of our GDP wow. is remittances. If you remove remittances, our economy collapses. So the capital uh, that enters our economy and causes velocity and movement of capital uh, that makes our economy grow is 40% dependent on remittances. So that's the first step of the plan in Tonga is exactly what was done in El Salvador, uh, the commercial solution, which does not require an act of parliament or uh, endorsement from the central bank, strike on the lightning network on everyone's phones and on the point of sale uh, at the vendors. Uh, and you can take uh, uh, the benefits of strike or any lightning wallet that you choose. Um, all it needs is for the vendors to accept it uh, transactionally. So uh, what Jack Mellers did in El Salvador was he rolled out a thousand cash points. So you can go with your QR code to any of those cash points in El Salvador, show the QR code and they'll either cash you out in fiat or you can spend it at the store there and get the change in fiat or you can spend it in Bitcoin and get the change in Bitcoin or fiat, whatever you want to do exactly. The next yeah. step after commercial solution is adoption. So the El Salvador team were very generous in sending me uh, an early copy of the bill uh, before it became public. Okay. So 
I was able to do what's called a gap analysis. So new law, you usually send it to the Attorney General's office and they do a gap analysis over about two to three months. Um, they test it against the constitution. Does it contravene anything in the constitution? If it does, those sections have to go. Does it um, uh, contravene any of our existing banking legislation or finance legislation? If so, you have to amend it. So because I'm a, a lawyer uh, by vocation, uh, I was in hospital and nothing to do. So I did the whole gap analysis in a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, how convenient. I, yeah, at the end of the week, I'd already done the gap analysis and remodeled the bill into a, a version that is presentable to Parliament. So I've had a presentable bill since August that can go to Parliament uh, at the drop of a, a, a pen. Uh, so all that's been holding us back is me being in hospital and the borders being shut in Tonga. So when those two things are no longer the case, the bill will be presented. Next phase, which I hadn't foreseen actually uh, in my initial plan, uh, but when my plan came out, I was approached by geothermal mining uh, and wave technology mining companies. Awesome. Uh, which is which is such the awesome thing about our community. Uh, these people. They just want to see the little engine that could uh, do well. They want to see a small Bitcoin country uh, excel and do well. Absolutely. So that's so cool about our community. So they basically said, look, here's our technology. You can use it for free. Um, we just want to see you guys do well. You're doing it at a scale that's not going to be too a big chunk out of uh, our operations because we can fit your whole country in the Astrodome. So <laughs> it's not going to be too much of a hassle for us. You got um, plenty so, of waves yeah. though. Yeah, the plen wa plenty of waves as well. <laughs> so yeah. geothermal mining uses, as you know, volcanoes. So my estate, my island, is the only populated volcano, but we have 20 others. So we've got 21 volcanoes in a nation of only 100,356 last count. Um, that makes one volcano for about every, about 4,720 people. Now it takes two megawatts of electricity to service about 5,000 people. Uh, so, uh, that's 5,000 times 20 is 100. Uh, so uh, 2 megawatts times 20, that's 40 megawatts. So let's make it 50, let's make it 100, just to say. <laughs> it takes 100 megawatts to service our national grid. Now, Bitcoin mining, we will most likely use, uh, have you seen upstream data's hash huts? Uh, no, I, I haven't seen them. Like in... so it's, a, it's about the size of a backyard shed. Okay. Um, like mini mobiles. Yeah. Uh, it's all corrugated iron, uh, very shiny chrome. And they put it on top uh, of gas flares uh, and they use gas flares, uh, which they harness to create the electricity. So effectively, it makes Bitcoin mining not just carbon neutral, which we do by using hydro and solar, etc., but carbon negative because it eats carbon that would otherwise be released into the atmosphere. So our, the units we've got are similar to a double sized hash hub. So as I said, because my mother future proofed our bandwidth, we've got thousands of gigabit up and down, which we don't use. So we're going to have double units with a mining rig on one side and a data center on the other. Um, I've, uh, I'm in, now in a partnership with Cisco. Cisco will supply the data centers, uh, the installation and the maintenance, and I provide the land and they get equity uh, for providing what they provide. Wow. So we use all that excess bandwidth which we're not using 
to house data centers. So AWS Southern Hemisphere headquarters are in Sydney, Australia. That's where their server farms are. If we take even 0.01% of that business, that is billions of, of dollars for a country of only 100,000 people. So in Tonga, we have $700 million in reserves. So that's divided up in USD, uh, bonds. Uh, so Guy uh, Swan, Miles Suter, uh, and Alex Gladstein, we were on BTC sessions together, and they all laughed when I said, they were asking, so what's your reserves held in? And I said, US dollar, and I went, high quality assets. <laughs> I all laughed because we both know that's what central bankers call negative yielding bonds. Yeah. <laughs> high quality so assets. I, went, so yes. I said, high quality assets, and they went, negative yielding bonds, right? I went, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, the melting uh, ice cube that bond. Michael Saylor talks about all the time, right? Exactly, exactly. So Tonga is presented after the first three phases with precisely the choice Michael Saylor talks about. He's, we're presented with 5% uh, melting, uh, melting at 5% per annum USD, bonds that have been negative yielding since 2010, Mm -hmm. or gold, mm -hmm. which depreciates at 2 to 4% per annum because of new production. Or if you take all the emotion uh, and are completely dispassionate and just look at it as an economic, a fiscal decision, you choose an asset which has a CAGR appreciation rate of 200% year on year since its inception. So it's a no-brainer. Um, that's the final uh, fourth step of the plan, is to move all our treasuries into Bitcoin, which is a much safer store of value than fiat USD, negative yielding bonds or gold. And Amazing. yeah, that wraps the fourth, the fourth step up.